say things like that. Well, it's, it's incendiary, and then it raises in my mind, all right, who is the real Barack Obama? He said that I had no idea, none whatsoever, that Jeremiah Wright, I sat in the pews for 20 years, he is like family to me, and even his praise in this speech. Now, the timing of this is interesting, because I had interviewed on Hannity and Combs, I interviewed Reverend Wright. We got into a big battle about black liberation theology. That was in March of 2007. Wright had been disinvited to, be, to give the invocation at his announcement he's running for president just a couple of months earlier. Right. So Wright is there. This is June now of 2007. So Wright is already a controversial figure here. Um, now it's interesting as, as this whole thing goes on. Then he has to give this big speech in Philly on race. So I decided we put the two speeches together and we'll take a look at one, we'll take a look at the other. In other words, this is what the media didn't report on, this is what the media didn't say. Very controversial things by Barack Obama that was never reported on versus the big speech, which I believe was done out of political expediency. We'll let our audience decide. Let's show them side by side. I've got to give a special shout out to my pastor, the guy who puts up with me, counsels me, listens to my wife complain about me. He's a friend and a great leader. Everybody uh, give uh, an extraordinary uh, welcome to my pastor, Dr. Say? Jeremiah Wright Jr. I have already condemned in unequivocal terms the statements of Reverend Wright that have caused such controversy and in some cases pain. For some, nagging questions remain. Did I know him to be an occasionally fierce critic of American domestic and foreign policy? Of course. When Hurricane Andrew struck in Florida, people said, look at this devastation. We don't expect you to come up with your own money here. What's happening down in New Orleans? Where's your dollar? Where's your Stafford Act money? Makes no sense. Tells me the bullet hasn't been taken out. Tells me that somehow the people down in New Orleans, they don't care about as much. Reverend Wright's comments were not only wrong, but divisive. Divisive at a time when we need unity. Racially charged at a time when we need to come together to solve a set of monumental problems. Problems that are neither black or white or Latino or Asian, but rather problems that confront us all. Who's the real Barack Obama, Tucker? <laughs> two very it's, different it's people. Two very different, different people. Uh, they're speaking a different language, different cadences, different accents, different gestures. I mean, the falseness here is overwhelming. And I would say that whether he was putting on a southern accent or an Asian accent, it doesn't matter. He is playing a role in one of these cases. Uh, it's not clear which one. I, I assume in the Hampton speech he's, he's putting on a persona he doesn't normally occupy to pander to the crowd, but who knows? Either way, you are seeing a remarkable exhibit of falseness on display. There's no other explanation they for this. Don't by care. the way, I would say this about any politician. Well, I, I, look, I go back to Al Gore. I've been saying about him. He went before a predominantly African-American audience. He went into Al Gore preacher mo mode. And... Republicans have the wrong exactly. agenda for African Americans. They don't even want to count you in the census. I mean, it was it takes your breath away. Hillary did the same thing herself. But we've got we've got the accent, we've got anger, we got ra they don't care as much about you. Also, we That's don't right. need to They're build money to the, out the suburbs, suburbs, but not to our neighborhoods. So what what do you conclude? Look, I conclude that this, well, I'm not exactly sure is the truth. I'm not God. I can't read Obama's mind or look into his soul. But I, I, it seems to me this is a case of extreme pandering. He is talking to an audience in a way he thinks resonates with them, but he's also using fear to motivate them. Again, the core of this speech, a very simple message, the federal government doesn't like you because you're black. Imagine telling people that. Imagine trying to make them more fearful, more paranoid, more hurt. That's a truly divisive and sick thing to do, and it's on display in this video. This is not one right wingers opinion. We're posting the entire video on the Daily Caller, and you can watch is it. Is this the whole 40-minute video? You're posting the whole 40 minutes? Every, mi we are, every yeah, second. Of course, because we, we will be relentlessly attacked on two grounds. One, people say, this has already been reported. Well, actually, it hasn't been reported. 
and I know because I reported on it the first time. And second, we will be accused of clipping this to our ends. And so we're just going to put the whole thing out there and people can judge. But the first thing that will jump off the screen at you is this is not the Barack Obama you've watched for the past eight years if you've been paying attention. And this guy is whipping up race, hatred and fear. Period. Is, is it is it would you how would you classify the comments? Racial? Is that best way? Is it? Of course I racial would. Of course I. I absolutely would. If a white politician got up in front of a white audience and said, here's what you should know about black people. They don't like you. They're in charge and they're shafting you and they're getting a They're profiting from your suffering. What would you say that is? That is racial rhetoric designed to make people fearful. Yeah. All right. Let's go to what he says about black churches uh, in this speech. And again, the whole video is up on The Daily Caller. If you want to take a look at the 40 minute speech, remember, the media only at the time put up what nine or was it nine or 10 minutes that they reported on? Uh, it, was, it was a little less than a little less than 10, a little less than 10 minutes. All right. Here's more of that speech that was never seen before. And when it comes to faith, we've been told that all that matters is what divides us. Evangelicals. Don't be talking to mainland Protestants. Black church, that's different from the white church. That story is about Trinity United Church of Christ. Because we talked about black people in church. Oh, that might be a separatist church. Catholics can't be getting together with Protestants or Muslims or Jews. Now let me, let me play that through this prism. And that's when I interviewed, and the, remember, Reverend Wright, he was in the audience. This is June. He didn't. Sh he was disinvited from the from the, the invocation when Obama announced he's running for president. He came on my show two months later. This was the last interview that Reverend Wright did. Hear what he said about l black liberation theology, and you know what he goes on to say in that particular clip there, because we talk about black people in church. Here was my exchange with Reverend Wright. This is on the website today. Well, let me let me just inform our audience, and I want you to respond if you can. It says commitment to God. By the way, I'm with you, and I hope you'll pray for me, Reverend. Um, commitment to the black community. Commitment to the black family. Adherence to the black work ethic. Now, Reverend, if every time we said black, if it was a church, and those words were white, wouldn't we call that church racist? No, we would call it Christianity. We've been saying that since there was a... White Christianity, we've been saying that ever since white Christians took part in the slave trade. We've been saying that ever since they had churches in slave castles. We, have, we don't have to say the word white. We just have to live in white America, the United States of white America. Have I'm going to ask you this question. How many Whether books of Dwight when, Hopkins have you read? very angry and defensive. I'm just trying to ask a question here. You're, I'm you, I'm Barack know, Obama I'm goes you to, sir, you Barack Obama answered, goes to your you church. You haven't answered my question. And you, it seems to be when you say the black community, black Key family, word, black seems. work ethic, Key black is, community. It seems. It seems, it seems, seems to sir, an arrogant, sir, ignorant person. Sir, I'm sir, asking you, have you sir, answered me? How many books sir, of Dwight I'm going to say this, you whether you like it or not, I'm going to get my words in. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you, I think as a Christian, sir, I think as a Christian, you should not separate by race in this day and age. And that's why a lot of people are going to look at that and say, we're all, we're all supposed to be united under Christ, uh, aren't we? Now, it goes into black liberation theology, which we examined, and there might have been one other interview that he did after that, but I don't remember which one. But black liberation theology, you know, the black community, the black this, the black that, and I'm asking him about, and then he's praising him here, but then he gives us other speech. I, did he just say those words in Philadelphia to make the controversy go away? What does he believe? Well, let, let me just say, I believe that Jeremiah Wright married Michelle and Barack That's Obama true. 20 years ago tomorrow. I believe that was uh, their anniversary tomorrow. Amazing. Um, look, my, my personal feeling is that he speaks to each audience what he thinks that audience wants to hear. But let me say how totally disingenuous it is for Obama to claim that Jeremiah Wright was attacked for talking about black people in church. That's utterly false. I reported on this, too, at the time. People had very specific concerns about the nature of black liberation theology. It wasn't talking about black people in church. That To say something like that before this audience is, again, to reinforce the point that the rest of the world doesn't like you because of your skin color. This makes people more fearful, more afraid, more paranoid, and by the way, more cut off from the rest of America. This is the opposite of what a uniter does. This is what a demagogue does, and it's wrong. We'll be interested to see if anybody in the media follows up and has the courage to ask about these things. Remember, during the 2008 Don't hold election, your breath. 2008 election cycle, he was asked one time.
about Bill Ayers. And he just got a guy he started his political career in his house, gave speeches with, sat on board with, boards with. He's just a guy in the neighborhood, acted like he barely knew him. And he still got away with it. We'll follow up. Tucker, thank you. The full 40 minutes on The Daily Thanks, Caller.